The fate of the tiger in the wild is sadly known only too well. At the start of the new millennium, less than 4,000 still roam the jungles of Asia. Poaching and habitat loss mean that within a decade, wild tigers could well be extinct. In captivity, it's another matter. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Oh, my boy. In the USA alone, there are now 7,000 tigers in private zoos, parks, and homes. There and elsewhere around the world, many tigers in captivity are actually handled by humans. A good percentage of those are professional tiger trainers, like Swiss-born Sarah Hook. Performing nightly across the US in her own Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey Circus Act, Sarah makes the art of working with tigers look easy. The truth is anything but. Just one wrong move and she could be attacked. Take the case of Russia's most respected tiger trainer, Nikolai Pavlenko. I like all kinds of tigers. I like orange tigers, white tigers. Or Hollywood tiger specialist, Rick Glassy. Uh, that's insane. I'm sorry. Or tiger expert, Andy Goldfarb. He also then jumped on me and uh, bit me in my arms. Oh, look at me. They've all been savaged. So often, the tiger is portrayed as nothing more than a very large and cuddly cat. Yet the list of fatal attacks grows at a staggering rate. And more and more people are working with tigers every year. They are indeed fascinating creatures, capable of the most ferocious of attacks. And the warmest of relationships. which leads to some chilling questions. Are all tigers potential killers? Can they be tamed? Or are even the tamest looking tigers simply very well trained? Of all the remaining five species of tigers in the world, the Bengal is regarded as the most visually striking. With its deep orange fur, far brighter than its Siberian cousins, and its dark camouflage stripes, the Bengal is a distinctive creature. Don't be fooled by the placid looks of a tiger at rest, like Sultan here. These are powerful and innately aggressive animals. And as this keeper already knows, they're always wild at heart. Tame, bad word. You said the bad word, you're out of here. We don't consider them tame at all. Andy Goldfarb and these men handle seven Bengal tigers at the Dreamworld theme park on Queensland's Gold Coast. Following them on a regular working day with a stroll through the park, you begin to believe you're watching big, harmless pussycats. But only days after these telling words of caution from Andy, he'll be hospitalized after being attacked by Sultan. There's different definitions for tame. If you take the scientific definition of tame, which means how close you can get to a wild animal and then actually go to zero, which means you touch it, our animals would be tamed by that definition. 
but tame for us means that I could let you guys or anybody bring guests in from the park and just let them hang out on Tiger Island, jump in the pool, let them sleep on top of them just like we do. So that's why we don't ever like to use the word tame. We just show that they're well-trained or well-conditioned animals that are comfortable with us but are still uh, a dangerous wild animal. That said, once the public fills the park, the tigers are kept on a very tight leash. Petting is allowed, but only on the tiger's rear, well away from teeth and claws. Just going to on the back side, guys. There you go. Later, privileged Tiger fans pay top dollar for their own private sessions. <laughs> Photographs are encouraged. <laughs> Mild physical contact is even permitted. But always, two keepers are close by, watching the tiger's every movement. Only these keepers, like Patrick Martin Vege, are allowed to get very physical. This is Sultan, and he's one of our four youngsters. And right now, he'll, uh, he's about 22 months of age. So he's getting pretty close to being uh, as big as the adults are. Right now, he weighs just a little bit over 150 kilos. As the manager and head keeper of DreamWorld's tiger compound, Patrick has reared Sultan since he was born. He definitely wants to get his way, and he wants to do things when he feels like doing them. Uh, he's the most food motivated when it comes to doing various behaviors for food. He's right on it. He wants to be there as quickly as possible. So he's a very outgoing cat that way. A captive tiger's diet has to be carefully regulated to keep it healthy. Two nights a week, it's bones. Okay, Sita. Even at mealtime, Sultan's natural instinct is to keep the food to himself. He's growling because um, he's possessive, and that's how the that's cats like would keep other animals really from trying to take things away from them. They would get very possessive and very aggressive over whatever that may be. In this case, it's a bunch of uh, rib section there, and he's pretty aggressive over that, wants to make sure that I'm not gonna take it away from him. Several times a week, Sultan and the other tigers are taken from their cages for some solid exercise. We're going on a walk around the uh, tree plantation here at Dreamworld. Cats really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun for them to spray different trees and rocks and just kind of hang out and chase each other. And they really get pretty pumped up back here. Girls. Girls On this walk, Sultan's naturally aggressive temperament comes to the fore as he spars with one of the females, Sita. They just tend to want to jump on each other a whole lot more when they're out here because it's a big, big fun play area for them. Later, the white tigers assert themselves. <laughs> From time to time, these big cats will attack and kill. So they've caught a few birds, not so much out here, but usually yeah. in the park. Mohan's caught a peacock, um, and then they uh, have caught a couple ibis and a couple ducks and stuff over here. Peacock didn't fare well. Unfortunately for the peacock, it didn't quite make it. Of all the tiger's activities at Dreamworld, their favorite treat is getting wet. We're gonna hopefully get some of the cats in the pool and do a little running around, a few toys, 
and maybe even uh, see if they'll want to jump on me a couple times. That's kind of fun for them to do. Even though they'll sleep for up to 16 hours every day, Patrick and his fellow keepers see to it that they put some time in the pool every day. On a hot day, they may spend two, three hours each in the pool. The two large cats, tigers and jaguars, like the water. Uh, both those cats lived or lived in hot climates, and so they had to adapt to cooling themselves off, and water's a great way of doing that. How fast they're in the water, tigers are very fast. Uh, they can certainly outswim the fastest of us. The games here appear to be harmless play. Sultan and Rama derive enormous pleasure rolling this giant ball. But only days before he'll be badly bitten, Andy is well aware of the tiger's true nature. We look at these animals as wild animals. They are not to be trusted 100% or anything like that, but as you've seen, you know, by watching us, we have a lot of trust in our cats. We have a comfortable relationship and we can hang out together, but um, they still are a dangerous animal and they could attack us. But you as a trainer need to be able to read the animal and judge the situation to keep yourself from getting into that position. These toys are constantly bitten and easily destroyed. The tiger's just so powerful their teeth ever so sharp. <laughs> the keepers try not to let them get too excited. When they're training, the reward system is used. Jump high and wide enough, and Sultan will earn a piece of meat at the end of this stick. More subdued, and yet very affectionate, is the six-year-old tiger, Rakan. He was born in, uh, in the U.S., and then uh, I raised he and his sister at my house in California, and then brought him over when he was about six months of age. Mm. Rakan is extremely lazy, and he uh, views the world slightly differently than every other tiger does. Uh, he'll look at clouds, he'll look at planes, and he's just a very unusual cat, uh, probably one of my favorites that I've ever worked with, and that's probably because he kind of uh, marched to a different drummer. Another daily event for Rakan and the other Dream World Tigers is the formal training. So what we're going to try and do with him is watch his attitude as I come up, see? He gets really upset, which is not something that we would like to see happening on a regular basis. And, and there's no real reason for it except for that he thinks that maybe I'm going to take his food or I'm going to take him away and things like that. The reward system is in action again, as the tiger is taught to walk from one mark to another. When you work an animal like this, you're, you've got to be so careful about not making him mad, <laughs> because it's not going to work out. Okay, go way back. Just have him wait for a second there. Hi, buddy. Say, so that's good. So he'll eventually chill out. Then there are the sit-ups. A sip of milk is the tiger's reward this time. Well, some of the behaviors that we do with the cats are um, designed to show off their size and their balancing ability. As you can see, Mohan's quite large. <laughs> Anything in trouble here for biting the carton. Uh, this design shows their size and their balancing ability. Uh, this is a sit-up. That's sit-up, easy. Good boy. And they'll use this a lot of times in tall grasses. 
uh, can get a little bit higher vantage point or along the trunks of trees and get a little bit higher up in there as well. Um, and then he's going to do a rise here. And that shows his, his size standing straight up and down. He's pretty heavy here. And Mohan stands about almost nine and a half feet from nose into his tail. All care is taken, but occasionally a keeper will get nipped. Tigers are very good climbers. Using their powerful legs and sharp claws, they'll scale a tree for yet another morsel of meat. Spot on. Come back. Finally, there are jumping exercises. The tigers are led along large logs and encouraged to leap up to three meters. As the distances are increased, the tiger appears to fly through the sky. But not every procedure goes to plan. What happens next shows how easily the handlers can lose control. Sultan here is the offender after being loaded into a van for a trip to a movie set. Andy had then donned an actor's costume, clothing that excited Sultan to the point he jumped on Andy and started biting him. He decided that he wanted my, my boots and grabbed my foot and bit into my foot, which then at that point knocked me onto the ground. And then uh, Pat was you know, trying to get him off and uh, two other people, Bruce and Renee, helped uh, Sultan uh, to try to get him off my foot. And then he also then jumped on me and uh, bit me in my arms. Remember now just how savage Sultan can appear. Imagine having those teeth biting into your flesh. And then he finally just got a good whack in the head and uh, he said, okay, I'm done. And that was that. That's what's gonna take in that situation when, uh, when a cat is, is, is as pumped up as he was and having as much fun as he was. So yeah, then I spent uh, few days in the hospital uh, getting cleaned out because the most important thing that you have to worry about is the infection that you can get from getting bit by an animal and, uh, and tigers are a meat eater so they have a real dirty mouth so I had to be on IV antibiotics every now and then you know we're gonna get bit and I think that's what surprises people they're always like wow this tiger you know was raised by these guys and he bit them and it's like it's not a shock to us it's not a surprise to us they're a wild animal and like we talked about before, they're not tame. That's him saying, I'm sorry, Andy. I didn't mean to do it. Yeah, right. Anyway, <laughs> so that's Salton. We can still be together. He doesn't remember it. I'm, I sure do. This gives you a chance to see how tall he is. Today, Andy has started working again with Salton. This is a fighting posture. When tigers get in fights in the wild, they'll rise up on their hind legs, take swings at one another, trying to knock the other tiger over. So they got a lot of power all in here in the front chest area. That's going to be the main tool for, for bringing another animal down. For the moment, fancy costumes are out for Andy. I know you did mean it. I know you had a good time, huh? <laughs> yeah. We're still friends. He's still my favorite. Amazing. Huh. Real amazing. A two-hour drive from the Thai capital of Bangkok brings us to one of the world's most productive tiger breeding centers. Here at the Shwaracha Tiger Zoo, their collection of Bengal tigers has been growing steadily to the point they now have 300 of them. Once any of the female tigers goes on heat, the keepers step in, steering them towards cages where they'll be separated. This three-year-old female paces her cage, waiting to be paired with a young male tiger who's been brought in from another zoo. 
This importing is to avoid inbreeding. At first, the visitor's attempts at union are not successful. But he persists until a healthy connection is made. Like other big cats, the entire act of mating is over in less than 30 seconds. There follows a gestation period that lasts just over three months. During that time, the female tiger is kept isolated, watched closely by her keeper, Somjit. Then comes the moment of delivery. The placenta eases out ever so smoothly, revealing a perfectly formed cub. Instinctively, the new mother cleans up, licking off the placenta until the cub is able to fend for itself. It's a very healthy specimen, this firstborn. But not every birth goes so well. Within an hour, a second placenta appears, again with a perfectly formed cub. This time, Somjit intervenes, breaking the placenta and cutting the umbilical cord. I'm not scared when I'm delivering. Tigers are like humans. They need help. I can approach them because I am their friend. They know that I never hurt them, so they let me help. This second cub is not breathing properly, and Somjit does all in his power to revive it. He tries everything, even giving it mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. For the mother, there are mixed emotions. Because as one cub is dying, its healthy brother suckles vigorously. Despite these attempts, the second cub does not survive, leaving mother to grieve quietly. The surviving cub spends the next three weeks alternating between his mother and a small cage. Somjit monitors his progress closely, weighing him every day. Then after 20 days, all of the newborn cubs are placed together in larger wire cages, not unlike a baby's cot. By now, their eyes have opened and they're becoming more active by the day. Within two months, the cubs have grown appreciably. Some of that weight gain comes from regular bottle feeding. But most of their nourishment comes from a most unusual source. A large sow has been employed as surrogate mother to all of the cubs, feeding not only the tigers, but her own litter. Using the pig for milk is safer, say the keepers, with so many tiger cubs being accidentally bitten or crushed to death by their own mothers. 
Certainly it's an unusual mix of babies. The placid pig teamed up with increasingly aggressive tigers. Yet how about this? One of the piglets turns on one of the cubs, if only in jest. Later, yet another animal from the jungles of Thailand is introduced. A baby macaque, ready for more serious horseplay. It's at this stage of the tiger's development that the senior keeper, Siripad Interkanuk, becomes involved. <laughs> He begins building a long and trusting relationship with all of the tigers, because in three to four years' time, they'll be called on for their ultimate performance. It's showtime at the Sriracha Tiger Zoo. Years of training are now paying off. He's four years old. This is the fifth year that he's going to be with me. I have a breeding pair, so I bred them, and I deliver mite by myself. We have been together for a long time and we love each other. Siripad shows no fear as he repeatedly places his own head in the tiger's jaws. Other keepers elsewhere have died doing just this. Sometimes when he roars, he means it, but sometimes he's just teasing. He's okay here on the stage, but he sometimes gets angry. And if he's really angry, I would not approach him. I'll step back. Finally, Siripad's star performer shows off a most difficult routine, walking forwards, then backwards, along two taut ropes. It's the culmination of four years of hard work since birth, and a prelude to an even more stunning public performance in Russia. That shortly. But first, Hollywood's top tiger trainer, Deep in the mountains of southern Oregon works an animal trainer with a fearsome reputation. Among the top Hollywood film producers, Rick Glassy is the man to contact when they need lions or tigers. He's a man of enormous patience, working closely with these three lions since they were born here at the Oregon Tiger Sanctuary. Everybody's so good in here. Good boy. They were born 15 months ago, and uh, we've raised them all together, obviously. We want to keep them as a pride, and we want to work them as a pride. All righty. Another of his cats is this spotted leopard. He could be so much worse right now. Just watch it, just watch those claws. I got into it because I love the cats, and I, I felt uh, something, uh, I don't know what it was, but it was just an attraction to them, uh, and I, 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 I felt that I was able to understand them, and uh, um, to this day, I mean, it's been 25 years, I feel the same way. But of all his cats, his favorites are the tigers, and none more so than this one. This is Bashu. He's a three-year-old male Bengal tiger, obviously a white tiger. And he, uh, we've been working him uh, for studio work for the last two and a half years. Hopefully he'll be in a, we like, I like to see him in a movie or a, uh, you know, commercials or something like that. He's, he's an excellent tiger. And uh, not every tiger is good for studio work, so uh, Bosch is a special cat. Assisting Rick with this familiarization process is animal trainer Sally Falsch. 
Both Rick and Sally are conscious that this big, soft, furry animal is still a killer at heart. Whenever you get bit, you've blown it. You've, you've made the mistake. And I've certainly made those mistakes in my life over the last 25 years. You have to know the, how far to take a certain scenes. Uh, so you have to use the right cat. Um, I got bit much more when I was younger than, than now, just because I know more and I know what I'm doing. It's been a long time since I've, you know, maybe 10 years since I've got bit. Every day, Rick and Sally take Boshu for a long walk through the beech forests of Oregon. He likes to go places, he likes to do different things, and that's what you're looking for. You're looking for a cat uh, that is, wants to travel, is in, uh, inquisitive, wants to, wants to go places, uh, loves people. Part of Boshu's training involves making him comfortable on his own in wide open spaces. Good boy. Come then comes the more formal training, teaching Boshu to run from one point to another. So you call them to meet and you use a clicker so they associate uh, your clicker with food. And um, you would teach them to go either from A to B or, or go A and to a mark and then come. You, sometimes you can make them go slower, faster by the, uh, how your voice sounds. You can get them more excited to run. Come in, pick right up. Another skill movie makers usually require is having the tiger leap. What we're doing now is we're teaching him to jump. With a tiger, I usually do about 12 feet because that's about what they like to do. And this, this partic particular tiger does about 12 feet, and that's just about right. And we use it, we use it for still shots, or you can use it for an attack scene where you have a tiger running and then jumping, the start of an attack scene. And you can, you can use it for all sorts of things. In Jungle Book, we had the tiger jump on the you know the trainer and wrestle with him so you have to use the right cat traveling by road is another of Boshu's assignments a good tiger has to be able to go different places and feel comfortable and uh, so far he's always felt comfortable where he goes so we just want to keep uh, showing him new places he needs to feel at home on long drives that could take him to movie sets as far afield as New York or Hollywood. Got him? Good. Good boy. Boshu has been driven to a property where the snow is deeper. His first instinct is to head to the closest tree. He wants to mark his territory. He wants to feel somewhat comfortable here. And so the first thing he does, and a confident tiger will do that, uh, a confident tiger will come out and start marking his territory, like that's his place and his, his territory. And uh, that's just showing that he's very comfortable here. He thinks this is his area just as well as at home. Another part of Boshu's familiarization program is to take him inside a conference center. Okay, we're going to walk around here a little bit and let him check things out and hopefully he won't bite anything. Like a speaker, Bush, good. Knock anything over. Boshu, Bush. For the first time, Rick has Boshu run down some steps. Boshu, Boshu, Bush, Boshu, come up, come up, Bush, Boshu up, come up. Good boy, come up. Okay, Boshu, stay. Good, stay. Nice day, good boy. And I would work him in here a little bit. If we did it over and over and prepped it, he would get better and better at it. Bushy, come on, Bush! Bushy up! Come on, Bush! Bushy up, 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 up! The final part of Boshu's training today involves a heavy workout in the deep snow. Good. You work him in an area like this with a lot of snow, it brings out the energy. He gets a little rowdier, and then you want to see if you can still kind of control that and have him, uh, like we just did, come to you and, and call. And uh, if you fell in the snow like that, that would trigger him to want to jump on top of you. And then the other instincts would come out. Once he's on top of you, well, maybe I'll, I'll bite you. You know, I'll bite you in the arm. Once he bites you in the arm, well, maybe I'll do something else. Good boy. It's tiring work, even for a tiger as robust as Boshu. And even though he'll most likely star in a Hollywood blockbuster one day, 
Boshu, this most beautiful of tigers, will always be wild at heart. You can never train out the natural instinct. I think a lot of people, sometimes that's yep. a misconception. They're always a wild animal. And it's not that they're good or they're bad, it's what they are. And, and you can control it, and you always have to control it. And uh, you can build up the greatest relationship in the world. But they're still a wild animal. You always have to be aware of that. Twelve hours by train from Moscow across the expanse of Russia, you'll find one of the world's most foremost authorities on handling tigers. As we're about to witness, Nikolai Pavlenko is a legend, working alone with up to 11 tigers at a time. This cub is the fifth generation to be born in captivity. Even that long time in daily contact with humans doesn't stifle the tiger's fierce natural instincts. A magnificent tiger is angry, aggressive, belligerent, deceptive, but beautiful and strong. It may be hard to imagine this fluffy cub as an aggressive adult, but tigers are unpredictable wild animals. <laughs> His right arm is badly scarred after a vicious tiger attack. I've been attacked. Others have been attacked. Of all Russian trainers, I have been injured the most. Still, his love and respect for tigers is such that he continues to work with them. This is Uri at his first day of training. It's a slow and tedious affair. So what is Pavlenko's formula for training success? With a fork, meat and patience. Bambi! As Pavlenko coaxes Uri into his first sit-ups, he reveals how he came to be working in the circus. My parents did not work in the circus. When I first saw the circus as a child, I was stricken. Stricken so powerfully, I never recovered. My show is the oldest in the world. I am the sixth generation from the times of creation of tiger training in a cage like this one. Pavlenko has spent a lifetime perfecting training tricks like this. Uri, the novice, is placed in a line of well-trained elders and taught basic maneuvers by example. Пошли! Тихо, 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 тихо. Зара, 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 Зара. Паш, Зара. Зара, что ты дёргаешься? Зара. Чара, чара. Ле-ле, ле. Ай, бравушки. Чара, чара. Вега, вега. Ну что вы бегаете все? You'll notice Uri is the only one to be rewarded. If before, the trainer was presented as a great big guy with a mustache, strong, wearing boots and rough, with a mass of accessories, whips, pistols, forks, then now we have learnt enough about animals to realize that with brute force alone a man can accomplish nothing. The maneuvers become more and more difficult until Uri the beginner is even following the old hands through burning hoops. All of training is based not on force or physical capability, but rather knowledge of animals. Knowledge of psychology, knowledge of veterinary science, knowledge of animal anatomy, etc. These are the main things. The trainer today 
has to be someone else. He has to be an educated, knowledgeable biologist. Pavlenko's formidable knowledge extends to what tigers eat. This special table is used to prepare food for the tigers. The meat must be served at room temperature. Cold meat can cause infections of the intestinal tract in the tigers. This is why the table has special metallic heating elements. We give the tigers meat of all kinds. We give them pork, beef, mutton. We give them wild game, deer, horses, all kinds of meat without exception. It is also good to include innards such as liver in their diet. We also add a broad range of vitamins. Finally, after all this preparation, comes the moment the public have been waiting for. It's showtime. The great Nikolai Pavlenko stands face to face with the animals he's devoted his life to. And what a fine fighting spirit they're in. Never forget that these tigers could rip Pavlenko to shreds in seconds. Pavlenko certainly doesn't. You see, the matter is this. If there is fear, you should not be working with these animals. Every trainer has to have caution. Caution. A sense of moderation and caution. You should not confuse it with fear. I never had fear. Under the spotlight, Pavlenko's star performers attempt this delicate maneuver. The raised platforms are smaller than their paws, and yet, the tiger balances his weight perfectly. Next, an even more difficult balancing act. Pavlenko coaxes the tiger onto its hind legs and then urges it to walk backwards. All that separates the master and the beast is that thin baton. I can tell you that all of the tigers working in my cage are not contactable. That is, I cannot pat or come near any of them. They are dangerous animals. And all those adaptations that I employ, short sticks and so forth, are extensions of the hand because you cannot touch the tiger to push or smack it. It's a far cry from the whips and forks of old. Even more impressive is when he gets three tigers to stand and walk. It's all about cooperation rather than coercion. This manoeuvre, too, demands great concentration and trust from the tigers involved. As a finale, Pavlenko calls on all 11 of his magnificent tigers to work together. 
Keeping them all focused and in line is very difficult. Especially when young Uri, the newcomer, is so uncertain. He breaks formation several times to find a place further down the line. Worse still are the altercations. In this exchange, one of the older females bites the other viciously on the neck. This was a female fooling around. They fight amongst themselves, but I can insist harshly. As I said before, one female was old, another female was old. It was a tiff between two grandmothers. They'll get over it in a few days. The true climax of this evening's session, though, is this. As small hoops are set ablaze, the tigers leap through them. They're seemingly unperturbed by an element that would normally scare them away. Afterwards, the best behaved tiger is called on to take part in the post-performance photo session. As Pavlenko stands by, the audience are allowed to sit right alongside the tiger. The cubs are an even bigger favorite. First, some photos. Next, Pavlenko hand feeds them. Then there's time out for a playful romp in their cage. They will never become domesticated. Their mother will teach them to become tigers. I just don't want them to be frightened of people. And finally, a boisterous reunion with their mother. Apart from feeding, the cubs need care. For any little cub, the most important aspect of care is their mother's tongue, because she's always licking them and keeping them warm with her body heat, however cold it may be otherwise. In other words, she has a very benevolent psychological effect upon them. For Pavlenko, the next encounter is highly emotional. Vega, a stately 18-year-old tigress, is about to make her final appearance under the big top. I have been crying over this for several months now. I have worked with many animals in my performing life, over 100. But occasionally, I encounter unique animals, just unique. Their uniqueness lies in their artistic nature and their willingness to perform. Look carefully at the aging Vega. She's the grandmother of those two cubs we saw. And when she stands like this, she looks her age. Before too long, she will leave this world. But her tricks are unrepeatable. There are things she can do which no other tiger can. She hasn't performed these tricks for a very long time. I will now attempt to show them to you. First Pavlenko has Vega jump through metal hoops. 
This will be her last Vega. performance of, of these tricks. Of Vega. <laughs> then an act that Pavlenko says he trusts Vega. no other tiger to do. Jumping through two paper-covered hoops <laughs> held over his head. Так. Okay. I cannot let anyone else jump over me. Back in your place. That evening's public performance is both significant and sad. For 18 years, Pavlenko, the caring tiger tamer, and Vega, the super tiger, have been a team. This jump, the highlight of a distinguished career for both. This was her last time. Of course, she will die with me. I know that it will happen. That it is inescapable. I know that it must occur.